Another episode of Flight Tales. Woo. Woo. Yeah. Jake Jake did it Jake right did off the it bat. Right. He didn't hesitate at all. He said, ooh. Yeah, ooh. <laughs> ooh. Another episode of Flight Tales. Woo. There we go. <laughs> We're with Ian Brown. Honored to be here. <laughs> yeah, honored. He's honored. We were going to have Jake's wife, but, you know, she backed out on us. So now we got Ian. But we like, we're happy that we have Ian. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> we're happy that we have Ian. And uh, so figuring out how Ian, got his whole it. aviation career started. Actually, yeah, we've been starting like baby. And then all the way up, growing all up, all the way up, you know, whole life story. We can skip the baby part, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll just start at. Uh, well, I guess one good cool thing is that you kind of you work at Disney. Yeah, Disney was it was a fun time to work at. Um, it was I got to work at two of the parks, so that was also really cool. Magic um, Kingdom, parks. yeah, Magic Which Kingdom, parks? Magic Kingdom, and okay. Hollywood Studios. All right, got to work at Slinky That's, Dog Dash. The really? Hollywood Studios got the got the tower drop. Yeah, yeah, yep, I remember yep. doing that one time. Terrifying. Yeah, scary. <laughs> scary. The terror. Tower of terror. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Um, and then working at Splash and Thunder Mountain at Magic Kingdom. So how'd you end up at um at Disney? You you're from Rhode Island. Yeah. Went to school in Pennsylvania for college. Um, decided I wanted to do a college program with Disney. Mm-hmm. Was getting nothing, no job offers out of school up in Boston where I was from. So decided to do six month internship with Disney. Went down there for six months, and then four years later, I was still there. So yeah, so you you had so much fun, you decided to stay, to stay exactly, to stay for a long time. Well, yep, and not move back. Yeah. <laughs> so you were there till twenty. You said twenty twenty one. I want to say April, middle of April of twenty twenty one. I was with Disney, and then decided we decided to move. Me and my girlfriend decided to move to Fort Myers. She had a job offer down there, and I wanted to start a career that I was really excited and interested about and looked at schools and decided to go to ATP. ATP. Good old ATP. ATP. So what made you change into aviation? Into aviation. I mean, were you kind of always I've interested? Always want, yeah, always yeah. wanted to do flying. Um, just never had the means to it or yeah. like the opportunity to do it. Yeah. And so it kind of just happened to fall into place that Fort Myers had a location of a flight school um, and that's where we're moving to and it kind of within honestly it was within a week of us <laughs> deciding to move to Fort Myers I was going to flight school so, so your a, girlfriend also worked at uh, Disney also yeah, right yeah, that's yeah. how we met okay we met working for Disney so okay. she worked at Thunder while I worked at Splash and that's yeah. how we trained together okay um, so that's how we kind of met okay. each other did you meet Mickey Mouse I did. Okay. He's kind of cool. Huh? Yeah. He was my boss. He signed my paychecks. Every oh, week. okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mickey. <laughs> it's, honestly, that's on our paycheck. Is Really? Mickey, Mickey Mouse? Mouse? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. Is there really an underground? Yeah. Area? Yeah. Literally, yeah. that's like, so when we went. I was going to ask that question next. I figured that was coming next, yeah. so I was just going to start with yeah. it. Yeah. Pro Dustin over here. Where we park is like probably like five minutes behind Magic Kingdom. It's yeah. this massive parking lot for all the workers. And we have to take a bus into Magic Kingdom and it stop, It drops you off. There's two spots. One's behind like Fantasyland where all the princesses stuff is. Yeah. So there's one there. And then there's an entrance right behind. It's like where, you know where Pinocchio's restaurant is by the carousel? Uh, I don't know it that well, yeah. no. Right in the way far back of yeah. Disney, there yeah. is like in the park of Magic Kingdom, there's a, restaurant and it's, that's where we get dropped off to go into the tunnels okay um and technically when they built the park of magic kingdom the park is on the second floor the tunnels is not really underground yeah um they, they built, built it up dirt up and yeah. then they just put dirt on top of it and then okay. built the park on top that's of kinda it that's kind of cool it's like a bunker yeah oh yeah. yeah you can tell when you're going underneath the castle too because it dips down Oh, and okay. underneath to go further down because of how big the castle is. Yeah, it's crazy to see too. Like some of the stuff down in the tunnels, like they'll have rooms of where all of the characters' costumes are. So they call it like the wall of heads because it's like the heads all of the costumes. All of the costumes are on this wall. And they look crazy. like they're mounted that, like yeah, deer. That like, sounds like a scary movie, like, actually. Like, yes, like, that terrifying sounds really see. scary. <laughs> terrifying to see, but and it's then like they start moving and chasing yeah, exactly. you. Exactly. You know? I mean, it just seems like it'd be fun working for Disney. I mean, you and know, the best part about it too are the perks of it. When you're a full time worker there, um, you get 
in for free. You get certain days that are blocked out that you can't go in, but most of the time you can go in. So most of the time on our days off, we would just go to the park, get a snack and just sit in the park and people watch. Yeah. But then we'd have our family come in and we could take up to like 15 guests in per oh, year okay. and we could just park up. So if we want to go to Magic Kingdom one morning, we could go to a different park in the afternoon. Yeah. So that was- Drink a, around the world over at Epcot. Exactly. Yeah. That's the best That park. sounds fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I only got to drink two beers when I went. That was- you know, I want to after. do every place, yeah. but you know, that's it gets wild once you get to the end. Yeah, I bet you got to start in Mexico as you well. You start in Mexico <laughs> yeah. on the, the margarita, the margarita, and the tequila shots. Yeah, and all that. yeah, <laughs> it's expensive though, doing the drinking around the world because each drink is like eight, nine bucks, and there's like 15 countries oh my gosh especially when they do like take the out a loan to go <laughs> the, drink yeah. around the world <laughs> like the food they have a food and wine festival in epcot so they have the main buildings and then they have little subsections of different countries yeah so you could hit more than 15 countries in itself so, that's awesome yeah so anyway so you uh, decided to leave disney and uh start a career in aviation you went down to fort myers mm -hmm. went to atp went to atp in fort myers and in two months you got your uh no, let's see i don't think it went that no, fast that they fast. do do it fast we but do yeah. so what they told me was like within nine months yeah you'll get all your ratings okay for me it was like depending on the weather too down there we yeah. got thunderstorms every mm. single afternoon yep um so we i probably got mine in three months i want to say i got my private okay even still it was yeah. super fast so that is fast <laughs> i mean some people we get some people that take six months or longer yeah yeah <laughs> So three months doing it is pretty pretty fast. And then yeah. did that, went right into instrument, my instrument phase. Did that in about two months. What's cool about ATP with their like building cross country time is they yeah. do the crew cross countries. So basically you and another student go fly all over. Yeah. I've heard some students go from Florida all the way up to New York State. Or yeah, New York State. Yeah. It kind we, of sounds fun. Yeah, yeah. I happen to get stuck in the oh. Florida Triangle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Go Tampa, Jacksonville, back down to Fort Lauderdale, yeah. and back to Tampa. So we kind of just were moving. Basically, it was to move planes to other schools for that ATP had. Okay. Or, for maintenance or annuals, yeah. 100 hours, whatever. Yeah. yeah exactly. Just yeah. moving them around. So it was kind of scary as well because you're like. So you're are, flying a maintenance you're airplane. Flying, you're flying a maintenance airplane. Like oh, hopefully yeah. like something doesn't happen. Yeah. But. Don't lose an engine or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it was fun doing that. And then after that, we went straight into commercial. Did commercial. Their commercial was quick. It was like within two weeks. That's they, just practicing maneuvers and because you do the crew thing to build more to time. Build the two, build the hundred hours of. Okay. I forget how much, how many hours it was. I think it was like fifty hours we built cross country time with. Oh, okay. Um, because I got my private. You, you must get your instrument pretty quick. I mean, you need. So they're one forty one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Meaning they're you get a little bit less time. Yeah. Yeah. Because private, I was probably. I think I got mine at like 60 hours. Like the requirement's 40, but I, I mean, nobody ever gets yeah, to that 40. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then you had to, so 60 hours, then you did your instrument, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Went straight into so instrument. So probably 100 hours by the time you finish. Yeah. Yeah. And then went into, did the crew cross country. And I think it was like 25 or 50 hours that we did okay. together. And that was fun just flying around, doing instrument approaches at every airport down in Florida. Yeah. We did some cool approaches, I have to say. We went into Stewart, Florida. Mm -hmm. And then the approach was literally, we were over the water, probably three miles out over the water. Oh, yeah. Over the, yeah, approach. over the Atlantic. Yeah. So that yeah. was the, one of the cool approaches that we've done. So so the uh, last part of the commercial, I guess, is just practice and maneuvers. Yeah. And yeah. Commercial was just, it, with, with the instructor, it was really just pro doing the maneuvers with them yeah. and then getting back into the landings, going yeah. like back into the private phase all over again kind of thing. But yeah, just doing the maneuvers. And that was, I want to say with an instructor, it was like two weeks before oh, okay. I was before like- Before you check right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> going for CFI. They do a two-week ground school CFI course. But at the time, COVID was- that's when COVID still came still super around. high. Yeah. Um. So we did Zoom class. Oh. So that was hard, yeah, I bet. hard to watch yeah, and hard to do I because bet. doing Zoom for two weeks from like Could eight. Did you ask questions or was you could it ask questions? But it's like yeah, eight to four in the eight in the morning to four in the afternoon on Zoom. Yeah. Learn about FOIs and 
Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that. a sleeper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talking about regulations yeah. and all that. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, that put you asleep. Yeah, it was brutal to watch, to, uh, to listen, listen to. to. Yyeah. So COVID was going on. That Then what year was that? Then this is 2021 still. Okay, 2021. Okay. But you ended up getting COVID, didn't Correct. you? Correct. So, so that, that kind of slowed you down a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. I actually went up to their Jacksonville location for my CFI. Mm-hmm. I was there for about a week, and I actually caught COVID while being there. And it actually hit me hard. I was out for about three months with COVID. And you can kind of hear it sometimes when I'm talking a little bit. A little wheezy. It, it, it wheeze wheezy. and it's like a little scratchy still. Yeah. Um, Just because of how I, they said I've- You said you coughed. It. I mean, you had oh, yeah. constantly coughing. Yeah. And, yeah. I lost within the first month, I lost like 15 pounds because I just couldn't eat anything. Golly. Yeah. <laughs> it was- Man. Yeah. It yeah. was brutal. Were I, you in the hospital? Did you go to the- so that's the thing about <laughs> Florida. Like we went to the hospital and I was like, I was bad, but the, yeah. I wasn't worse off. They're like, the only way we can keep you here is if we put you on a ventilator. And I was like, nope, not nope, doing I'm it. good. Not yep. doing that. So I'll go home and risk it. Yeah. So yeah. we didn't really get much help in Florida. So we drove back here to Louisiana where Ann's from and uh, got I got more help here. Got fluids and all that and kind of got back oh, to the okay. Health better wow and quicker here that doesn't usually happen yeah <laughs> in louisiana yeah it was <laughs> it was crazy how quick it yeah helped me out really uh but it was yeah that that for made my so and and your girlfriend yes, yes and so she she's from louisiana right she's from lafayette yeah born and raised so you came over here to uh and then ended up wow yep it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but after I got COVID, literally went we went back and tried to go for my CFI there. Yeah. But we were close to our lease ending, so we didn't want to renew the lease in oh, Fort Myers. Yeah. Went with ATP and just finished my com multi with them. Okay. And then decided I'll probably hopefully kind of get something. And so we moved back here for a little bit, and that's when... Yeah, I showed here. up here. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, I want to do my CFI. Yep, yep. Yeah, so we we started working on that, I think, in September, right? Mm-hmm. And then you got it in, in October. October, that's right. October Halloween. 31st. Halloween, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember the debrief. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta go, Peyton. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Getting <laughs> late in the, the afternoon. Kids, yeah. <laughs> I go trick or treating, okay? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you end up finding us? I just Google search. Google search? Just the Google search and found, I found now, here. Now, why'd y'all end up moving back here? Back to Louisiana, yeah. Um, We wanted to spend some time with family. Okay. With her family, Um, because she hadn't seen them in four, about uh, four or five she years. she started about the same time. Yeah, you said y'all trained together, so. Yeah, we started in Disney about the same time. Okay. And then she worked. She stayed over there yeah, pretty much yep. the whole time. Yep. And then, yeah. yeah. So we wanted to see, she wanted to see some of her family, so we came back here for a little bit. We weren't going to stay this long, but uh, yeah. it just happened. So. Yeah. <laughs> We're happy here that yeah. you stayed this long. <laughs> so yeah, we did CFI, and then you started working here, and... You've been here over a year now because yeah. it's what we're in January now. Yep. Just so, over, a little bit over a year. And we've grown a lot with students. Oh, yeah. And like we were just talking about, you know, we last year, ago, year we at this time, <laughs> there was nothing going on. Yep. Finally, we, we've gotten students that are wanting to actually come in more. Yeah. Come in more <laughs> and study and activity going yeah. on. So even just having people here studying by themselves in the yeah. back, that's been a huge. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, it helps everybody, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, that's what Brennan and I were talking about was that, you know, he what after his instrument, I think he said that he started coming here all the time to study. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about how that's probably the best way to be here. And he sat in on a bunch of people's. Oh, yeah. That, and I think that's what's going to help him, too, yeah. for his CFI is just him sitting in with everything, with mm-hmm. all, even the classes, him helping me. Him teaching the yeah. classes the last yeah. two days. We've been teaching the ground days. school classes. So that'll even help him even more. Yeah, because for the, for yeah, we did that too. I mean, yep. you I came did it a in. a couple times. You had taught some classes. Even just being here for me too, that helped yeah. me. Yeah, you co- you would come in and study. Mm-hmm. I remember just like what Brennan's doing. Yeah. You would come in and kind of study and Cause I know if get I was away from everybody <laughs> and kind of. If I knew if I was at home, yeah. I ain't studying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, I mean, we get people like that that yeah. don't want to. 
oh yeah i'm studying then you come in they come in and and uh start asking you start asking them questions and, and they don't know obviously the yeah you had been studying yep see very easily yes. known for us when you're studying versus yes not. <laughs> yeah yeah it's the first question what do you need to go fly an airplane as a pro as a private pilot uh, uh it's off to a rough start yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> okay well, this isn't gonna go well yeah <laughs> <laughs> and we got more people here doing that studying we got keith too i guess we'll have keith on one of them so he's here studying so it's good like they all get to kind of see how it goes how it goes you know with the ground school and then and then just all feeding off each other or mm -hmm. asking questions and stuff. How was your experience at ATP? Um, I the I mean the planes are fresh out the Piper factory, oh, brand so new. They're all brand new, nice planes. and shiny. Yep. So glass that's a cockpit. That's what got me. Were they all glass? Mm -mm. Oh, the ones, okay. the ones that I flew were not fully glass. New steam gauges. Yeah, we still yeah. had some steam gauges in ours, but yeah. the now they're going full all every single one of them every, is glass, yeah. glass yeah, cockpit so spoiled all those students yep <laughs> <laughs> that's how they get you yeah they, they get you nice shiny how, aircraft yeah look how pretty this um, is but yeah when we were when I was training for my commercial we were out probably about 15 miles away from the airport so it wasn't bad which is kind of a beautiful area down there too we were right over the coast yeah. so it was beautiful area training out there but we were about 15 miles away and we are doing steep turns actually all of a sudden our amp meter starts going Oh no! Oh yeah. <laughs> so we like turned about it off. Had, about to have an electrical failure. Yeah. yeah. Turn it off. Turn it back on, and uh, still it was fine for a second, and then it started dropping again. So we were like, "All right, let's head back to the yeah. airport." So we start heading back. At this point, we're still about I want to say probably like ten miles out. All of a sudden, our Garmin GPS starts flickering, flickering. black, oh, going no. black. Oh no! Come back on. The battery. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that starts flickering. Our MFD starts flickering. Our comms start going out, and so we had a Squawk seventy six hundred because we're losing comms. Yeah. My instructor grabs his phone and he starts calling tower while I'm flying the plane back. They clear us to go. Did you get the light signal? Yeah. Oh. So, so, so we. That's cool. Yeah. So we get we called them and uh, see made sure like we're clear to come in. And they're like, yeah, you're clear, turn base to final. Yeah. And as we're on base, I guess, I don't know, some, we couldn't, he couldn't hear the tower or something. A plane, like 300 feet, 400 feet in front of us, is cutting us off. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it is a plane, not a helicopter? No, anymore? it was a plane. Yeah. Wow. It was, yeah. It terrifying. I don't know who's flying that low. Yeah. Right, cutting y'all off. Yeah. Were they, so. They were coming in on final. Oh, okay. And we were on base, and we are probably half a mile away from them. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if he didn't hear them say, hey, you're going to follow the plane, and then look yeah. for good, whatever it was. But that happened, and then on final, they are like, just wait and get ready for light gun signals. Yeah. And we finally got light gun signals, came in and landed. And it was like the alternator belt was like frayed. Oh, and, and Yeah. Yeah. That's not too bad yeah. of a fix. No. Yeah. No terrifying when you're but, up. yeah it can be scary up there because you don't know what's going on yeah. you're thinking your alternator just fell off or something yep yep was that kind of the only thing that had happened that, there? and then for my multi for com uh multi we were doing same thing i was on this time it was on my check rod which was oh great timing uh it was another electrical thing oh uh, no oh. but uh, another incident where oh. it was on my check rod oh day yeah was, that's that's yeah that's nerve wracking. The worst yes. timing. Yeah, possible. the worst time it could happen. Yeah, yeah, because you're already nervous and then the plane's not acting right. Yeah, exactly. So we take off and we're just going to do the landings at the same airport in Fort Myers. We go and we're in the pattern and I go to put my gear down and the gear horn goes off, saying like our retractable gear yeah. has not fallen, it's not yeah. come down and, and bend in place. So at this point, then the DPE said, uh, okay, I got, I'll, I'll take controls. I was like, cool. You got it. <laughs> it's all yours. It's all yours. <laughs> you got it. You got to have it. So what, off. so what ended up happening? Did it, did it come um, down? Or so we just... flew, we went around again in the pattern. We didn't touch down or anything. We dropped down to like 200 feet just to see a tower could tell us if they yeah. were down or not. The tower said, it looks down. I don't know what the issue is. Yeah. So we come in and he had the controls and we came in and touched the mains and it was fine. As soon as the nose wheel touched, the alarm went off. Oh, really? Oh, so it's just a false indication. It was just a false indication. That the, yeah, the gear was. It's down. still scary because you don't know. <laughs> yeah, and you know, once that, once you hit the pavement, and you you hear the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was terrifying. I was yeah. like, I hope we hit 
I hope the tires yeah. stay in. Yeah, you can't do anything after that no. once it starts scraping the ground, yeah, you're, you know. You're at plane's will. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Even the maintenance guys down there, they were like, We don't even know what the what it why happened. caught what caused yeah. it or what happened. So did they fly the plane after? Like did they go to do you know if they took it up and I like think checked like, it? I think it was like three like they went up the maintenance guy went up and checked it and the same thing went off with them. Yeah. They came back in. They I think they said like three days or four days later they finally like ripped it all apart and like found out that it was like one of the sensors or something. Uh, one like, of the sensors was bad or yeah something like that yeah. but like they had never ever seen it before of why it would have went off i'm like of course well, my. yeah yeah that's yeah <laughs> of course, on my check ride. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that's it, th- those those types of problems you know it's like you don't want you don't want to hear that from the maintenance guy oh yeah. i've never seen that i've before. never seen this before yeah. uh, well it, it happened yeah i'm not lying to yeah. you yeah <laughs> yeah it makes you feel like you're crazy you know <laughs> <laughs> exactly so but, like i'm not crazy what kind of planes does atp have? they had the piper archer oh yeah that's 180 horsepower huh? yeah, yeah 180 horse low wing plane and then for the multi was the piper seminar okay same thing 180 you didn't have any issues with i've heard of people doing multi-training and having issues with the engine restart and when you know because you have to re- shut down an engine correct that, and, that was crazy. Yeah, doing that like yeah, for it's weird because you, yeah, <laughs> you're cause fully you, turning off an engine yeah. and then starting to fly with one engine. Yeah, you know, so at least was, you do it at, at a high altitude. So you God forbid to, something happens. Yeah. <laughs> but I've heard of stories of people, you know, having to for having us, to shoot the approach or come in and land with a single engine. For us, it was they couldn't get it started. We, I mean, for a couple times, it like took a little bit of time yeah. for it to get back started because the Seminoles that we, like I flew were the older, the 80 model. Um, so it was like the older model of the Seminole. It took some time to, to get, get them started oh, again. Yeah. You're like, you're hitting the starter and come on, come on, you can do it. <laughs> you, you see it start it. spinning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it. Even the, the commercial, that's another thing too about the commercial multi-engine check ride is doing the, the approach with one, one oh, engine. one engine. Yeah. They didn't pull, obviously. You're not, you're not, yeah. Fully, you got the, fully. <laughs> you got, well, you got the, when you do the approach, you got the engine running. I yeah, mean, you just it's pull on, the throttle but it's back. Just, yeah, it's yeah. just to idle. It's cool. I like, I love doing the multi engine. Yeah. It's just fun flying. Maybe with we'll two. get a multi engine at some point. So, what's your ultimate goal? Ultimate goal would be mine is airlines. Okay. Um, eventually getting up there. I want to kind of do something like what you did as well. Is yeah. Doing like corporate is fine just to, Whoever it's a has. mystery of what I did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, Nobody we're not knows. telling anybody <laughs> who you flew for. I'm, yeah, I'm just I'm just some guy here, uh, <laughs> some random guy. I interview people doing something corporate level after yeah. to doing the airlines, um, yeah. just to see kind of what is out there. I mean, you know, and right now I think we Brennan and I talked about this about how you know there's it's a great time to be in aviation as far as you can as a pilot you know there's so much need for pilots Mm -hmm. you can go anywhere do anything you want if you you get tired with something you can pick and choose what you want to do you can pick and choose on what you want to do you know (laughs) not back in the day when it was like all right you're set doing this yeah yeah there was no movement you know no and like even and and i've talked to people like you know people have been in pilots for a long time longer than me and uh you know it they had to flight instruct for mm-hmm. like 2000 hours or something you know before it, they could get anything before they else. could get anything because there was just no movement right, right. you know and now it's like when you hear about people like leaving might be, leaving the airlines after 6 months and going doing yeah, something else. yeah <laughs> hopping from one airline to the other <laughs> and it's just used to not be like that right. and if you got on with an airline you were there for that the, the entire time till like you, you retire yep Yep. You know, now you can pick and choose if you want to stay at the airline or if you wanted to go do something yeah. corporate level. Too. Yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait to yeah start flying bigger, bigger planes. Yeah, <laughs> seven forty. No, don't fly the seven thirty seven max. It might be careful. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> scary. <laughs> Door might fall off. Yeah, <laughs> we don't like that. No, either. no. <laughs> If people are up to date on their aviation news, they'll know. They would know that, that this the door happened fell off two weeks ago. And that was a funny ago? joke, okay? Two weeks ago? I yeah. Think? yeah. Alaska Airlines. Was it the, it was the Ma- it's the Max, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The door just like ripped off of it. Yeah. What airline was it? I think it was Alaska. Alaska Alaskan Air? Airlines. Yeah. They had the emergency door. It was an emergency door, wasn't I think it? They so, came yeah. off, flew off. Flew and off, and they were up at. Fell in somebody's backyard. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be terrifying. Yes, that's scary. 
<laughs> like, <laughs> it's lucky, you know, they're lucky nobody got hit. Yeah. Yeah. I think United decided they grounded all the planes and then, or the FAA grounded all the planes and then United decided to go ahead and start inspecting everything. Everything. Which is smart because they've had multiple issues. Like Alaska Airlines has had multiple oh, issues. Oh, really? Yeah, there was another incident too with Alaska Airlines. A couple it's with of, this plane though, right? Yes. Yeah. Same plane. It's the Boeing, um, what is it, seven, oh, 737 MAX. Mm-hmm. So yeah, United decided to start and uh, check in their planes and they found loose bolts. And now these planes just came out of the factory. That's scary. That's terrifying. Yes. <laughs> That's scary that they're not tightening the bolts, you know? To like, hold that in. <laughs> and you know, like, I mean, any kind of aviation maintenance, we, you know, boot safety wire, Loctite, uh, cotter pin, you know, like yeah. we, that we, uh, I'm trying to think of the word now. <laughs> Redundancy. There, there we go. Is, there oh, is. yeah, I got the big it, word out there. there. It was, it it was, was coming. <laughs> you know, it was, the wheel was turning up there. <laughs> the but, wheel was spinning, yeah. but nothing was coming out. Yeah, we were getting there. The redundancy. We're redundant on everything. You yeah. know, you put the bolt in, you tighten it, you safety wire it, and you triple check it. Make triple sure it's check tight. it five times, put some torque seal on it, you know, all kinds of stuff. Make sure it didn't turn. So it's it's kind of scary that yeah. they didn't didn't test it before or yeah, check it out the factory like these guys. <laughs> That's like man, a must couple, have been built on a Friday. There you was know, a, they went home a couple months ago too. There was the one of the passenger who pulled. Did you see about that one? The uh-huh. passenger pulled the emergency exit door and the door flung open. Really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> now what? Just like just up cause. in the air? Yeah. Like they were up just, in the air? They just pulled the door. Oh, yeah. somebody needs to get beat up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, that might have been Alaska. I don't know. I'm not. I don't know what. I mean, that, that sounds like a spirit yeah. problem. Yeah. Spirit airlines. Something <laughs> happened there. <laughs> Crazy issues with that yeah, airline. Yeah, yeah, them people on spirit. I actually got a friend that flies for spirit. So I think, I think a, of, for the pilots, it's good. I was going to say, one yeah. of, I've heard that the, for spirit airlines, pot, like they yeah. treat their pilots great. Yeah. I think one of my top three choices, I think for airlines would be like spirit Southwest and maybe American or I'm not sure about Delta, but we're ready for the next step. Yeah. Have you seen the trading cards that people have been now getting for the airline? Like Delta. Oh, I th- you know, actually, I think I'd heard about it. I haven't seen every. Them, no aircraft for delta has like a trading card like a sports card oh and like people are getting now like, like baseball when they, cards yeah and, stuff like, and that. like they're getting the captain of the of the plane to sign it so it means something more to them <laughs> which is i have to get me one of those we're gonna have to get them for the cessnas oh yes <laughs> yes when we fly kids we yeah. can just give them a trading card yes so is it a picture so what's it's a, on the cars it's literally a picture of the plane with the like the like 737 okay and it's just like a it's a weird like metallic card okay so it's like kind of like a shimmer like a a really good holographic yes thank you holographic, i couldn't think of the word bro dustin knows bro all dustin the big words is amazing yes but yeah it's like a holographic card with the plane on it i'm gonna have to talk to my friend that works for delta any. yeah, yeah. So how some, can I get one of these let me trading, get a cards. trading yeah. card with your you know signature? What? If I get one, I'm gonna put it on the table yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be part of our. Well, maybe we need to put it in a frame. A shrine. Yeah, we'll, yes. we'll have it on Just the table right sitting here. here. Yeah, for every week. Well, it might take a little while for me to get this thing. Just go you know? fly a Delta. Just, Just go get, get on one, one and hey, ask for the card. You got a no, trading no, no. Card? I want one. My friend's a captain at Delta, and I want one from him. Yeah, that's where I want whatever he whatever he, he's flying. Yep. you want that one. I want that one, and we're going to put it in a frame right here on the table. This one guy I was watching this video of who was on a Delta flight, yeah, and he got the trading card of that plane and then had the captain sign it like it was like an actual pro sports card, but it's for an airline. I don't even remember how we wrap it up. We just kind of stopped talking. There hasn't really really been been a wrap-up. He just tells you like, hey, that's it. Flight tails. If you made it this far, you listened to the entire episode. And for that, we would just like to say thank you, and we hope you enjoyed it. We would also like to thank Ian Brown for joining us today and sharing his story. If you have any questions about today's episode or suggestions for future episodes, just leave a comment or message us, and we'll do our best to answer. If you'd like to check out some fun aviation videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Owens Flight Training. Or if you'd like to get more information on becoming a safe, knowledgeable, and confident pilot, just head over to our website, owensflighttraining.com. 